A tricky forecast ahead as we head into our Wednesday. We're going to break it down in this evening's edition of, <coughs> of, pardon me, of Weather for Weather Geeks here on April the 4th, 2023. It was the warmest day of the year so far by a few degrees. We hit 69 a couple of times back in February, but we did 72 today, 17 above average and just four shy of the record high for today's date. Now, tomorrow's record high is 79, and I think we'll probably break it. Uh, before the afternoon is through. So if you thought today was warm, just wait until tomorrow. I mean, true shorts weather coming up on our Wednesday. Compared to the average, plus 17 locally, plus 16 Pittsburgh, plus 16 Cleveland. The whole region was way above the average, and I think a lot of records are going to be challenged, if not broken, tomorrow. We weren't breaking any temperature records, though, on this date 36 years ago. Snowfall records broken, though. This is one of the biggest... Late season storms on record for our area, area a whopping 11.8 inches of snow on today's date in 1987. I do believe this is the biggest April snow event on record. Now, in 1966, I believe, there was a, a handful of inches deep into May. But as far as the total snow, this probably does take the cake. I'd have to look it up, but I, I think this probably does take the cake for uh, any one event during April or May back in 1987. The snow this evening is confined to uh, the northern plains and near the U.S.-Canadian border. Severe weather is the big story once again this evening. This whole sequence bears a lot of similarities to what happened late last week. If you remember last Friday, we had a big severe weather event out here. And guess what? As we go through the next several hours, that same zone under a level 3 and 4 enhanced and moderate risk for severe weather. So places like the Quad Cities and Des Moines and heading over towards Chicago down into the St. Louis area, into the Ozarks, and all the way down into northeastern Texas under the gun for tornadic thunderstorms, hail-producing storms, and gusty winds as well. Interesting times ahead as we head into our Wednesday locally. I was surprised to wake up this morning and see that SPC had, had, had upgraded us to an enhanced risk for severe weather. We do have some things in place tomorrow that, w that lend themselves to a pretty high chance of, of big thunderstorms, but we've got a lot of things going against it as well. And personally, I would not have been confident enough to upgrade our risk level from a level 2 to level 3. And this evening, I'm still not confident that that was the right idea. Now, I could have pie in my face by this time tomorrow evening, but I do think that the severe weather threat tomorrow will probably be more centered out here as opposed to east of I-71 in Ohio. And maybe with the overnight outlook uh, for what will become day one, they'll take us out of the enhanced risk. But to me, we just have too much going against us for a big severe weather event for tomorrow. We have, we talked about last evening, if you watched last evening's uh, video, we talked about a, a possible capping inversion overhead that will stifle uh, widespread thunderstorm activity for a lot of the afternoon. Now, stuff could still try to break that cap and pop up, but it, I think it would be pretty isolated in nature. Um, and so I do think that uh, that is one major factor tomorrow. And the other major factor is I don't think we have a real great trigger for thunderstorms until the front arrives in the evening. Uh, there's not any sort of big weather disturbance, a trough, something like that pushing through during the best part of the day tomorrow to instigate a lot of showers and thunderstorms. But one thing for sure, either way, it's going to be warm and it's actually going to be humid for this time of the year. Now, we wouldn't think much of lower 60s dew points in July, but in early April, that's that's pretty elevated. And again, this is along with temperatures in the upper 70s and lower 80s. So we've got some warmth, we've got some moisture in place, that is for sure, but you're going to see on the latest run of our in-house model here uh, a, you know, kind of lacking or a lack of a widespread activity for a lot of the midday and early afternoon. Now, you'll, you'll notice the, the most recent run of our model here does try to bring some stuff across around 5, I can't rule out that this is the right idea. Would this be severe? I can't rule that out, but I, I do think that uh, the chances are this is more towards routine showers and storms rather than severe weather, even though, again, I'm not going to be able to rule out just yet uh, that these storms might pack a punch uh, during the second half of the afternoon. By far and away, the better chance for wet weather, let's back this up to right around here, just after sunset. This is when our front is making its approach. I think rain is most likely at this point. Any of this activity could be strong and gusty, but this is coming at an unfavorable time of the day, right? This is not mid-afternoon. Um, we're losing the heating of the day at this point, and some of the wind energy aloft is pushing to our east at this point. And so would this be severe? Again, can't rule it out, but I wouldn't bank on it either. I'm, not, I'm just not confident enough 
in this being a uh, true severe weather event for us. Now, as we go into Wednesday night and Thursday, then the showers might linger for a time into Thursday morning, but then we dry things out and the sun tries to come out Thursday afternoon. And that starts what should be a very nice period of weather taking us through Friday and the upcoming weekend as well. Mention the temperatures. Not only is it warm tomorrow afternoon, but tomorrow morning, it's going to feel like summer. I mean, it'll be close to 60 at daybreak tomorrow morning. Our average high temperature is about 55 at this time of the year. So, yeah, what a day coming up on our Wednesday. A little bit of reality check coming our way Thursday before we warm right back up. By the weekend, an Easter Sunday just looks like a perfect day. I mean, if you're heading off to services early, you're going to need to bundle up, certainly. It'll be in the 30s early in the day, but we'll have no trouble getting into the mid-60s Sunday afternoon with an abundance of sunshine both days and spring fever heading our way mid-April. Uh, if, you know, if you would ask me a week ago would I be showing a map like this for mid-April, I would have laughed because the, the model data was pretty chilly looking for mid-April, but... The model data has done a bit of an about face, as it's done in the longer range frequently in the last several months. Every time, you know, on weeks three and four, the modeling wants to show cold weather. By the time it becomes weeks one and two, a lot of a lot of times uh, the the warmth is, is just winning out. Uh, the models, the long range models, are not picking up correctly on some of the tropical forcing, some of the stuff that's going on in the tropics way out in the Pacific Ocean um, in the longer range. They clue onto it by the time it's a week or two out, but weeks three and four, they're just not picking up on uh, the tropical forcing favoring those warmer uh, phases and uh, delivering the warmth to a lot of uh, the U.S., especially east of the Rockies. So again, hope, hopefully your takeaway from this video is uh, uncertain forecast for tomorrow, but stay weather aware. I'm not going to be able to rule out some potent thunderstorms, even though it might, might be fairly isolated in nature for a lot of the afternoon. We're going to digest the latest model information this evening and post some updates on social media. I'll have a full update tonight on 21 News at 11, and uh, Jimmy will have you covered on WFMJ Today tomorrow morning. And as I will uh, look over the data tomorrow morning, I'll be sure and check in as well and to bring you the, the latest on what we expect on what should be a very June-like Wednesday afternoon.